everybody kidding me? I was just telling everybody, in five years, I've never waited on, on Nate. His last day out, we're here waiting for Nate. Well, let's probably get up here and catch our breath. Oh is that it? Is that the last one? Yeah, yeah so have we counted? Do we know that we're all... I'll pull along soon. Yeah. <laughs> He'll pull up in his car. I just want to thank everybody for coming out. Usually we go, and we will, we'll go out to the dam, but I just want to stop here for a second. I got a little, uh, I'm not a speaker, so I'm more of a writer, like I said last night, so I'll just get through this. All right, so some of you were here last night, or were out with us last night, and you, you heard the beginning of the, the story about our first trail run with Nate, but I'm gonna get a little bit further into it right now. I know Mariana's smiling already. All right, we were at Clayton, it was just Nate, Mariana, and I, right? And the hills were torturous the first time out, and I was struggling to keep up. Nate told me before we started, like he tells all the new runners that come out, if you need a break, just give a yell, and we'll take a second to let you catch your breath. <laughs> I just remember running those hills at Clayton the first time with the two of them, thinking, holy crap, I'm going to die. But I'm half stubborn, and the other half stupid, so there was no way I was going to give in and be the one who asked for a breather. Secretly, I was just hoping that Mariana would break first. I didn't know she was such a tough cookie at the time. Well, we made it through the run in one piece without stopping, and I just remember how difficult it was for me the first time out. Months later, a couple of us were running here at Mercer. And we got talking about that first time out, and Mariana, I'll never forget, says to me, I hated you that first day. You came out for the first run, and I wanted to stop so bad, and I was just waiting for you to call for a breather. <laughs> so I just laughed, and I confessed that I was actually dying that day, too, and I was waiting for her to ask for the breather. And Nate just turned around, and he was like, what the hell? Why didn't one of you just say something? And I said, Nate, because there was no way in hell I was going to be ringing that bell. Uh... And those of you who are familiar with the, the Navy SEAL training and what they're put through during Hell Week probably get the reference, but... All throughout, all throughout the, their hell week, as their instructors are torturing the SEAL candidates, they're continually reminded that they can drop on request or DOR anytime they feel they can't go on, simply by ringing a shiny brass bell that hangs prominently within the camp for all to see. The bell in that case signifies a failure, and I tell you this story just to be clear because I don't want anybody to confuse my intention here. For as long as I've been running Mercer, I've always come out to this little tree, and every time I come up on this hill, I reach up and slap the branch as I went up and over. Oftentimes I've joked with Nate, Nate in the past that we should put a little bell up here so that we can ring it every time we come past. So this morning, to complete something we've always talked about doing, I've hung this little bell out here. And to honor my friend, I'll think of him in that first run we had every time